Hello and welcome back to our channel Valley Innovation. In today's video, we're going to dive into a fundamental concept in stock investing, the price to earnings ratio. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced investor, understanding price to earnings ratio is crucial for evaluating a stock's value. So, let's get started and uncover the secrets of price to earnings ratio. In this video we will be talking about some important parameters such as What is price to earnings ratio? How to calculate price to earnings ratio, its formula and we will see a simple example. How to interpret price to earnings ratio? How is the price to earnings ratio manipulated by companies? And lastly the summary. But before we dive into the details, I would like to request you to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest videos. Also, if you like the content of our video, don't forget to like this video and also share it with your friends and family to support our channel. What is Price to Earnings Ratio? The price to earnings ratio is a financial metric used by investors to assess the relative value of a stock. It is one of the most commonly used ratios in stock investing and provides insights into how much investors are willing to pay for each dollar of earnings generated by a company. In simple terms, the price to earnings ratio is calculated by dividing a stock's market price by its earnings per share. The formula for calculating price to earnings ratio is market price per share divided by earnings per share, where the market price per share is the current price at which the stock is trading in the stock market, and EPS is the company's earnings per share, which is calculated by dividing the company's net earnings by the total number of outstanding shares. Now let's look into how to calculate price to earnings ratio, its formula and we will see simple example. As discussed earlier the formula for calculating the price to earnings ratio is, market price per share divided by earnings per share. Now, let's break down the formula further into two parts. One is market price per share. This is the current price at which the stock is trading in the stock market. It can be easily found by checking the stock's market price on a financial news website, or a stock market app. Second is earnings per share. This is the company's net earnings divided by the total number of outstanding shares. It represents the portion of the company's earnings allocated to each outstanding share of the stock. EPS can be calculated using the following formula, net earnings divided by total number of outstanding shares. Net earnings refer to the company's profit after deducting all the expenses, taxes, and interest. It can be obtained from the company's financial statements, such as the income statement or profit and loss statement. Total number of outstanding shares refers to the total number of shares of the company's stock that are held by investors and available for trading. This information can be found in the company's financial statements, annual reports, or through financial news websites. Now, let's look at a simple example to illustrate the calculation of the price to earnings ratio. Suppose we have a stock of XYZ Limited, which is currently trading at a market price per share of 500 rupees. The company's net earnings for the last fiscal year were 1 crore and the total number of outstanding shares is 10 lakh. Using the given data, we can calculate the EPS as follows. Net earnings divide by total number of outstanding shares. That is 1 crore divide by 10 lakh. So our EPS will be 10 rupees. Now, we can use the calculated EPS and the market price per share to calculate the price to earnings ratio by dividing market price per share by earnings per share, which will be 500 rupees divided by 10 rupees. So our price to earnings ratio will be 50. So based on the calculation, the price to earnings ratio for company XYZ Limited is 50, which means investors are willing to pay 50 times the company's earnings per share for each share of stock. Now let us understand how to interpret price to earnings ratio. We can interpret price to earnings ratio in multiple ways. Number one is relative valuation. The PE ratio is commonly used as a valuation metric to assess the relative value of a stock. A higher PE ratio may indicate that the stock is relatively expensive, while a lower PE ratio may suggest that the stock is relatively cheaper. Number two is earnings multiple. The P.E. ratio represents the multiple of earnings that investors are willing to pay for each share of stock. For example, a P.E. ratio of 20 means that investors are willing to pay 20 times the company's earnings per share EPS, for each share of stock. Number 3 is growth expectations. The P.E. ratio can be used to gauge the market's expectation of a company's future earnings growth. A higher P.E. ratio may indicate that investors have high growth expectations for the company, while a lower P.E. ratio may suggest lower growth expectations. 
Number 4 is risk perception. The P-E ratio can also reflect the market's perception of the risk associated with a stock. A higher P-E ratio may imply that investors perceive the stock as less risky, while a lower P-E ratio may suggest higher perceived risk. Number 5 is industry comparison. The interpretation of the P-E ratio should take into consideration the industry or sector in which the company operates. Different industries may have different average P-E ratios due to variations in growth rates, profitability, and risk levels. It's important to compare the P-E ratio of a stock with its industry peers to get a meaningful analysis. Number 6 is Historical Comparison Comparing the current P-E ratio of a stock with its historical P-E ratios can provide insights into the stock's valuation trend over time. If the current P-E ratio is significantly higher or lower than the historical average, it may indicate a deviation from the norm and warrant further investigation. Lastly Other Factors It's important to note that the P-E ratio is just one metric among many and should not be relied upon solely to make investment decisions. Other factors, such as the company's financial health, growth prospects, management quality, competitive position, and overall market conditions, should also be considered in conjunction with the P-E ratio for a comprehensive analysis. It's important to note that the P-E ratio should not be used in isolation but should be considered along with other factors such as the company's financial health, growth prospects, management quality, competitive position, and overall market conditions. Additionally, the P-E ratio has limitations, such as not accounting for differences in accounting methods, earnings quality, and potential changes in future earnings. Therefore, it's important to conduct thorough research and analysis, and use the P-E ratio as part of a comprehensive approach to value a stock. Let's understand how is the price-to-earnings ratio manipulated by companies? The price-to-earnings ratio can potentially be manipulated by companies in various ways to present a distorted or misleading picture of their valuation. Here are some examples of how companies may manipulate the P-E ratio. One is earnings manipulation. Companies may manipulate their reported earnings to artificially inflate or deflate their P-E ratio. For example, a company may engage in aggressive accounting practices such as manipulating revenue recognition, overstating or understating expenses, or adjusting reserves to inflate earnings. By manipulating earnings, a company can impact its P-E ratio, making it appear more attractive or less attractive to investors than it actually is. Second is stock buybacks. Companies may use stock buybacks to reduce the number of outstanding shares, which can potentially inflate their EPS and lower their P-E ratio. By reducing the denominator that is number of shares, the EPS increases, and consequently, the P-E ratio decreases, making the stock appear cheaper in terms of valuation. Third way of manipulating P-E ratio is using non-recurring items. Companies may have non-recurring or one-time items that impact their earnings, which can distort the P-E ratio. These items may include gains or losses from the sale of assets, litigation settlements, or restructuring charges. Non-recurring items can artificially inflate or deflate earnings and, in turn, impact the P-E ratio. Fourth way is forecasted earnings. Companies may provide overly optimistic or aggressive earnings forecasts, which can impact their P-E ratio. If a company provides an overly optimistic outlook for future earnings, it may lead to a higher P-E ratio as investors anticipate higher earnings growth. However, if the company fails to meet these aggressive earnings forecasts, it can result in a downward revision of earnings and a higher P-E ratio, potentially misleading investors. It's important to note that manipulating the P-E ratio is unethical and can mislead investors. Investors should always conduct thorough due diligence and consider multiple valuation metrics along with other factors when evaluating a stock, rather than solely relying on the P-E ratio. In summary, the price-to-earnings ratio is a widely used financial metric that provides insights into a stock's relative value based on its market price and earnings per share. It is an important tool for investors to assess investment opportunities, but it should be used in conjunction with other factors for a comprehensive analysis. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please give this video a like and share this video with your friends. And once again, Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.